Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another game of TA Escalation. This time I've got a 1v1 for you between two of the best players in the business. In fact, I think these two right now race here in the bottom left. And uh, Harold here at the top right are currently the best two Escalation players in the entire world at this moment. I think it's hard to contest that. Uh, third place might be a little harder but but I think uh, these two right now race and Harold are the are the top tier skill levels they are both over 9000 right now it's kind of insane so we are going to watch these two players duke it out on a very uh, popular awesome uh, map called corruption guys recently I have hit a thousand subscribers and it's all thanks to you guys I really appreciate it uh, means a lot. I'm really happy that uh, we finally hit the thousand mark. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the video that I put out yet, we're gonna try to do like an all day subscriber gaming marathon pretty soon. Uh, I'll put the link to that video and my Discord uh, in uh, the description and the comments if you guys are interested in coming. But uh, anyways, thank you again everyone and let's jump into this game. Guys, this is part of the uh, tournament. The recent uh, Escalation Pro tournament that happened a few months back. And uh, from all accounts, this is going to be an epic game. Certainly, there is no lack of skill. Uh, there is, however, phone calls from Race's wife. Uh, he says that he had to uh, stop to take a phone call from his wife. And so there was a, a brief pause there. But uh, here at the beginning, pretty normal starts by both players. As you can see, this is a wind map. There's plenty of windmills happening. And um, both players just spamming those uh, weasels out like crazy. Now, Harold has already uh, predicted the shenanigans, and he is going to counter the shenanigans with slashers. Slasher's a very decent weasel counter because they have a long range and their missiles do track. And uh, so yeah, these weasels, probably not long for this world. Harold very well ready for that uh, invasion, if you will. And uh, But uh, yeah, both players have gone core this time. Why did they go core? It seems like core is pretty popular on this map. Where are my core boys at? Where are my core boys for whatever reason, uh, core versus core on this map, we are about to see epic robot warfare, and uh, it is going to be absolutely amazing, guys. If you if you don't know, the original story of Total Annihilation was that uh, the uh, the core faction wanted to make humanity into robots, into machines, and the arm faction was uh, none too happy about that. They did not want to become metal metal cyborg things. They just wanted to stay human. So, so if we are core versus core, it is uh, supremacy of the, of the robot kind. Cyborg people unite. In any case, uh, at this point, Harold has already built a leveler, and I really, I, I like the early leveler. I, you, you love to see it. Levelers are so uh, so strong against pretty much any T1 vehicle, May, maybe except for the uh, the Raider. But uh, they're they're just so good against instigators, and this instigator spam you typically see early on, both players pumping out instigators. Uh, like there's no tomorrow. And the leveler is just so good against the the uh, the spam strats. They are called the riot tanks after all. So uh, happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. Thank you, Harold, for building those early levelers. Just just having one in the mix just uh, makes me feel good. It's good for the cholesterol. Now I will say uh, Slasher is not so good against Instigators. I mean they will eventually get the job done, but uh, Instigators quite a bit tankier than the Weasel. And uh, so 
These slashers will eventually get the job done. Nice little battle here at the south. But, uh... Either case, um, both players with a pretty normal start, pretty equal in economy. Race now beginning to pump out levelers of his own. You love to see it. You love to see it. Like, why wait until the mid game to build these guys? Just build them early on. Just, just preempt what your opponent's going to do. You know, play chess in 4D. Okay? Just be a prophet and just assume that they're going to spam out all those gators and then have the counter ready before they even know what hit them. Those levelers are absolutely devastating against groups of these uh, main battle tanks. Or, uh, I don't know, how would you call these? Let's see, what is the actual, let's see what the actual description is. Assault tanks, yeah. There you go. The, uh, the leveler is great against the assault tanks. Oh my god, here we go. Oh, you love to see it. Oh, ho, ho. oh it's just so beautiful to watch. Oh, it's just yeetus deletus. Gator no more it is like insect repellent. Get rid of that. Get that shit out of my game. Be gone, tot. We don't want you here. No assault tanks for you, buddy. Uh, but, oh. Harold uh, kind of... Well, the, yeah. Yeah, both players pretty even. There really hasn't been that much economic damage done yet because both players have been doing a really good job of uh, kind of stemming the tide, holding off the... Uh, holding off Doomsday. Both players defending really well. So, so neither team has really um, inflicted that much damage. I don't think any cons have been killed. If, if any cons were killed, I missed it, and that's your guy's fault. Okay, so it's not my fault, the caster, for missing the action. It's definitely my, my audience. But uh, either way, I haven't seen any cons being killed yet, so I, I can't can't imagine that either player has really taken much of a lead early on here. I will say this though, race having all these levelers might get the edge in the battle. Oh man. But uh, Harold with a couple of levelers of his own. Now Harold is using all of his resources and I mean all. If you look at the bottom left here, Harold is on a sliver of metal and energy. I mean he is just like cranking it out and race having the opposite problem. He cannot use his resources fast enough. So what is Harold building? What is his secret plan that is allowing him to use his resources so efficiently compared to his opponent? One uh, or two instigators getting through here. A nice little battle happening in the mid, but let's see. Harold does have vehicle plant there, vehicle plant in the middle. One here in the top right working on a geo. So Harold uh, is uh, building from three vehicle plants. And his opponent maybe only has two. So, no, uh, but Race does have the K-Bot lab. So I could not tell you what is accounting for the difference here in, uh, in the resource expenditure department because both players are about completely equal on resources, but Harold is just using his much more efficiently somehow. Um... And you can kind of see that by this massive army of units he has. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Now, I did say earlier, uh, raiders are a decent counter to uh, to levelers. Not necessarily a counter, but they are decent. Uh, they um, they can kind of stand up to the levelers much better. And so, in this kind of rock paper scissors formation. One or both players could start throwing raiders into the mix. Guys, I have not watched this game beforehand, so I don't know what happens. I'm only making predictions based on the best available evidence. I, I can't I can't tell you what happens. But I do know it's going to be an epic game. So uh, strap yourselves in, guys, because I'm very excited. And um, again... Harold's army looking uh, looking a little stronger or bigger. 
But uh, that doesn't mean that Race can't hold it off. He's got some good defenses. Uh, his army is also nothing to scoff at. And it may come down to the engagements here. Race with a nice little squad of levelers there. And Harold sort of moving down the mid, but he's also kept most of his army here in the north to uh, stop a couple instigators. So I doubt he will get much accomplished with this, this uh, tiny incursion. Certainly not as much as he would have liked. And uh, now here in the middle. Again, uh, Harold splitting his army like that may have been a problem. I think if he had grouped them all together and may maybe moved them this way, he, he could have potentially done a lot of damage. But splitting the army like that certainly hurt his chances at uh, dealing some some economic damage to his opponent. Not a big deal though. Uh, both players still pretty even on eco. But the uh, Herald we did see is now uh, working on T2 and we have to assume that Race probably starting T2 as well. Yep, he is right there. So both players taking to T2 at about the same time. Neither player going to have a huge advantage. But uh, yeah, race moving through this little choke point. It's got to be careful. Levelers are great in choke point situations. However, storms are better in this long range open field type scenario. And... Uh, Race will clean up what is left of that attack down there. But again, both players doing a great job of attacking and defending. Neither team has really uh, inflicted much economic damage at all this game. It's been very, very even. And uh, even though there's been a lot of kills traded, there hasn't been much actual damage. It's just been a lot of... A lot of uh, explosions and pretty colors, but but not much actual, uh, not much actual uh, impact on the game in terms of uh, giving one player an advantage over the over over the other. So, uh, one thing that's interesting here is Harold is kind of mega. Uh, you know, Great Wall of China, this part of his base, but this part has almost no defenses at all. So I don't know if he's trying to uh, kind of tower defense, race onto the uh, the uh, west side of the map, or what. But yeah, he has kind of built a lot of defenses here and no de uh, defense on the other side. But race continuing to pump out storms, and storms... Very strong early on. They can't outrange uh, the levelers. Um, they don't do the most damage, but if you get enough of them, then they uh, they can get quite over the top very quickly. If you have like a hundred storms, they can uh, they can be quite uh, aggressive or uh, scary. But let's talk about uh, the uh, the options. Race deciding to go T uh, two bot lab while Harold deciding to go for the uh, vehicle plant race commenting that it is a leveler fest I think uh, I think he's right and it, it surprises me that ni neither player uh, built Raiders Raiders like I said a decent uh, if, if not counter a decent reaction to levelers but uh, storms storms good as well storms and MAK is not a bad uh, option Both players kind of metagaming each other here a little bit. And uh, Harold attempting another push through the southwest, but uh, I don't know. I mean, he's got about 10 levelers here, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to really inflict a ton of damage on his opponent. Um, 
just because race is continuing to reinforce this position. And now there's about five levelers left. They might be able to get some, you know, defenses. But I, I doubt it's going to be a very meaningful attack overall. Here in the middle, lots of K-Bots. However, there are now Reapers in the mix. And Reapers are kind of like upgraded leveler. They are called... I think the Reaper is called the uh, Heavy Riot Tank. So it's just a better leveler in most ways. But uh, Harold really putting on that pressure on both sides. Pretty annoying to deal with. For sure. And uh, this time breaking through with some more levelers. However, we have cans. And oh my good God almighty. Praise me Jesus. The cans are very, very, very strong. They're slow and lumbering. But, but good lord, if they can get into range of T1 units, it is nasty. Now, Harold has built a line of, or a wall of dragon's teeth around this gat, and that is going to make it nearly invincible to what we see here on the screen. Reapers are absolutely devastatingly powerful against T1 units. And Harold continuing to move through here with some levelers and reapers, but uh, again, just shy of having a truly um, impactful expeditionary force. These levelers both at about half health. And they might get a mex or two, but overall probably not going to uh, change the game in any meaningful way. So again, neither player really uh, inflicting that, that devastating damage. And interestingly, both players... Uh, failing to defend the west side of the base, of their bases. This is where all the action's happening. It's on the west side. Where are my west side boys at? One reaper does make it through. But uh, these levelers should clean it up fairly quickly. Uh, now, now um, cans versus reapers... Can should have a pretty big advantage there. Because they uh they just have so much health and they're they like they can like if you think of a unit in th in three dimensions or if you think of a unit like a long three axis uh it's like speed, damage and health. But that's not exactly right because there's also range. But like, let, let's put that aside. Let's just think of a unit like on three axis. Speed, damage, and health. Um, the can like exemplifies the damage and health part, right? Like it, it does so much damage and it has so much health. Its speed is just absolute garbage. But if you can actually get it in range of your opponent, we've seen cans win games. Like we've literally seen games. I've casted games where the can, like the player just spammed cans. That's all there was. It was just a million cans, and then, and then you win like that because it's just like, again, along these three axes, uh, damage and health, out the wazoo, like absolutely stupidly, over the top damage and health. Um, but of course, you know their speed is slow and their range isn't the highest. But if you don't care about those things. Right, if you're just looking for a meat sh like a meat shield that can put out a ton of punishment, uh, the can is is unbelievable. And like, basically, like if you don't build the proper counters to cans, they will just walk over you. I, I mean that literally. I'm not saying like metaphorically walk. Like they're they're limping. You know, L look at this. They will literally just walk into your base. So you need, you know, units that outrange them. Um, you know, the dragon's teeth walls are pretty good. Um, blue laser of deaths, annihilators, doomsday machines, things like that. You know, units, there there are counters to the can. But you can't just, <laughs> if you see cans and you just keep playing like normal, um, you're going to lose. That's basically what it is. It's just, it's kind of disgusting. Sumo is even more so. Sumo is in some ways just kind of a, a can... You know, cranked up to 10 and then ripped the knob off. 
Sumo is even slower than the can, but has even more health and does even more damage. So, yeah, interesting here that the players decided to go the opposite tech with uh, with Harold going vehicles and Race going K-Bots. Uh, I do think this attack uh, by Race a little ill-advised. He's fighting in a choke point here. This is where the uh, the riot tanks really uh, thrive, is in those uh, close range situations, where you can uh, really punish your opponent for uh, stacking all their units together. So uh, race will do better, I think, if he can try to get into a formation where more of his cans can uh, attack. As you can see, once those tan uh, once the cans can actually shoot their lasers, uh, it is quite powerful. And the and the reapers just do so little damage to them. I mean, the cans just shred the reapers, but the reapers just tickle the cans. It's kind of funny. Oh my god, the DPS is just stupidly high. There's some thuds in the background too. Pretty nice composition from Race. Um, and certainly Harold's gonna have to start building some Goliath soon. Goliath it will be a decent counter to the can. Um, can can pretty strong against Reapers, but let's go ahead and uh, check out the bases. Both players are on air, but it seems like at this point just building air constructors, nothing, uh, no aerial assaults planned as of yet. Uh, Harold building some fighters, but that's also not the same as as a bombing formation that we that we so love to see. Um. Looking at the economy though, race, it seems like race pulling ahead. Uh, let's see, it's fluctuating. It's fluctuating, but it kind of looks like race is doing better. And I think that's just on account of all these moho extractors on the field. He's got quite a few, quite a few mohos already. But his opponent does. Uh, his opponent does as well. You know, maybe you just can't really trust the uh, the resource graph. No, I mean I do think race is a little bit ahead economically, but but um, not not a huge amount. It looks like he's making about twenty five percent more energy, and maybe uh, twenty percent more metal. It's it's not a huge advantage at this state uh, at this stage of the game. But uh, my question is, what is the plan here? Uh, race could probably push through, but he needs to avoid this. He needs to avoid those defenses, and he needs to avoid that. If he could just kind of push up the middle right there, that might be the best spot, or right here. Either one of those middle paths would be better. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to walk into the defenses. That is a no, no. But if he can find an opening, find a, uh, ooh, nasty. Those thuds working their magic. Very, very nice wombo combo there between the cans and the thuds. And uh, finally, Harold pumping out those Goliaths, working on his third advanced vehicle plant now. Oh man, these Reapers do not want to get in melee range of the cans. They are just going to melt. Melt. Oh my goodness. The Reapers are gone, baby gone. And uh, the Goliaths now on the field. That will help a lot. But man, I'd really like to just see Race commit to a, uh, a vector of attack. Just choose a path. And stick with it. He's got a really nice composition here. 
course, with the glides coming out, that is going to uh, make things quite a bit more difficult. But uh, with enough cans, even the Goliaths are going to uh, evaporate. It's a pretty nice army. But can he do anything with it? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. These cans taking and dealing so much punishment. And the thuds in the background as well. Such a nice composition. Really well designed by Race. This is a uh, custom combos here. Harold even bringing the Avengers in to kind of try to halt the aggression. But yeah, his army has been split. He will he will pull the thuds back. And uh, ultimately, Harold will finally, I think, end that push with the help of all these Goliaths that he's pumping off the assembly lines very quickly. So nice job by, by, uh, by both players. Uh, race on the cusp of uh, dealing some serious damage if he had just uh, been able to get a little further north, he could have maybe taken out resource generator, moho, advanced vehicle plant. He could have done some serious damage. Very close. I mean, just literally a few more cans, and, and that might have uh, been pretty devastating for uh, for Harold. But as it is, um, still pretty close. And uh, race building some Goliaths of his own now. But race is going to want to spread out these thuds. You do not want to clump your units against Goliaths. Nice emulator here. And uh, Harold on three advanced vehicle plants. But also um, almost on an advanced aircraft plant. So when Harold gets this advanced aircraft plant up and running... Um, you know, could he go for a bombing strat? Is he interested in switching to an aerial aerial supremacy operation? Kind of uh, doing a sneaky type of bombing run on his opponent. He does seem to have air control. He's the only player that has built fighters this game. But race also going to uh, to advance air as well. So. Uh, He uh, he finished this advanced aircraft plant, but still not using it, which is a little surprising because uh, you know Harold does have air control. He has built the uh, only fighters this game. Race now sending out some peepers. Try to get some scouting information on his opponent. Never a bad idea. Knowing is half the battle. There's a lot of pulverizers. The scouts just won't get very far. Uh, but yeah, right now, neither player uh, building anything too spectacular. Both players just kind of uh, stacking their armies, proliferating their forces, posturing on the front line. It's always an it's always an interesting moment. Hold that thought. Race kind of throwing his thuds into the front line. He wants to be careful. But uh, yeah, in this engagement, Harold's certainly going to come out on top. There's just so many more Goliaths, and Reapers. That is a very well-placed emulator. 
And these emulators have a ton of HP, but uh, yeah, he will force Harold to retreat with that emulator. Nice job. And now some Mortys on the field. A Morty, kind of like an upgraded thud, if you want to think of it that way. But what I was saying before uh, I was so rudely interrupted is that uh, it's always an interesting uh, question of when to transition to, uh, to T3. Um, obviously, if you can get to T3, you will have a big advantage over your opponent. But um, when you transition to T3, you are also very vulnerable because uh, it, it's expensive. So both players have to do a delicate balancing act of you know, building up their forces, building up their defenses, you know, staying, uh, staying on top of the attrition war, but also deciding when it's time to actually move into the next tech tier, if at all. You don't have to go to T3. Heck, you don't even have to go to T2. But uh, typically in these stalemate situations, it is a, it's a nice option. Pretty common. Um... T2 air can end the game as well. Obviously, a uh, good bombing run can end the game, but neither player really seems to be pursuing that option. So right now, both players just building up their T2 forces and upgrading their economy and uh, speed up the game a little bit because I don't... I'm not sure when, uh, when we're going to hit the... Uh, yeah, and Harold continuing to stay on on t2 even building a fourth uh, a fourth advanced vehicle plant really committing to it and uh more scouts by race i think he wants to see if his opponent is going t3 yet he wants to see what harold's up to harold is being very quiet And um, race pushing forward now with a lot of Mortys and some cans, but uh, I don't think this is going to be enough. There's so many Goliaths on the field. I mean, it's a massive amount of firepower. It really is. It's 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 huge. But Goliaths are so damn tanky. I don't think that it's going to be enough. And uh, now Harold building some pillagers to try to fire back. He needs to be careful. Pillagers are pretty fragile. Yeah, ultimately it was uh, it was a nice idea, but there's just so many Goliaths. I mean, <laughs> Harold has four advanced uh, factories pumping out Goliaths. It's a uh, stupidly, stupidly uh, high amount of production. And uh, yeah, now Harold with the counterattack. But also, I don't think it's a good idea for him either to, uh, to be aggressive here because there's just too much. There's too much, uh, too much defense and too, uh, too many uh, artillery bots going to have to force Harold back so both players doing a good job of just kind of holding the line but neither player really able to break through at all or kind of in a trench warfare situation at the moment and uh, neither player really advancing to T3 yet or uh, coming up with any kind of game ending strategy that I can see A lot of skirmishing, a lot of posturing back and forth. But uh, race now starting to push out sumos, and sumos, uh, if you can get enough of them, might be a decent option. Sumos have a pretty good range. Uh, they can outrange Goliaths, I believe. They can't outrange pillagers, though. He would need a lot of sumos. Race going for another scouting run. 
Really interested in what his opponent's doing. I think Race wants to know if Harold's going to T3 yet. And, uh... In fairness, that is an important thing to know. You don't want to let your opponent get a tech advantage on you if you can help it. Nice Doomsday Machine here finally being built at the uh, northwest. And uh, now these sumos making it to the front line. This emulator still alive. Will finally go down, but uh, you know there's some sumos up here. And they are very hard to kill, but uh, a lot of pillagers proliferating as well. And uh, with enough pillagers, could he take out some of these defenses? He's targeting this gat here. Pillager's not the most accurate. But they have a pretty nice AoE. And they do good damage. So that gat will eventually go down. I think. If he can ever hit it. There we go. But uh, man, that is, that is so many sumos. That's six. And uh, man, these pillagers are pretty strong. You don't see pillagers that much. Very niche kind of unit. They're uh, they're very weak uh, in terms of HP, and obviously they're not super accurate. But in certain situations, they can be very good. Once again, though, neither player really able to break through, and I don't. I'm not really seeing uh, much of an in-game strategy for either team. Uh, now Merle's uh, or Diplomat's being thrown into the mix and finally Race will begin his his transition into T3. What about Harold? Has Harold decided it is time? I don't think so. Harold really still on the, uh, on the T2 gameplay. Oh, nope. I was wrong. Harold is already on T3. I think he just got here, so Harold has just now Made it to T3. He, he seems to be struggling on energy, though. One thing is, uh, T3 is very energy uh, intensive. It costs a lot of energy to uh, produce the units and build the structures. So it is it is not a cheap uh, transition, and uh, Harold seems to be struggling with it. But uh, Race deciding to uh, once again move forward with... Uh, Sumos and Mortys. Uh, once again, though, I, I don't think it'll be enough. There's a lot of defenses. There's a lot of pillagers. And uh, quite a few Goliaths as well. So that's... Harold is, is pretty well defended here. Both players economically uh, very, very even, very close. And uh, Race hasn't quite finished his gantry, but he will soon. And uh, this battle in the middle continuing to rage. It's been kind of a endless battle in the mid this entire game. Very sick. But yes, ultimately Race will not be able to break through here. Even with the Sumos, there's just too much defense. Um, yeah, it's just not its not going to happen. Race is kind of throwing his army away there. Um, didn't achieve too much of anything. As the, uh, as the last Sumo will fall.
But, uh... So this is interesting. Harold has gone straight for an upgrade center into Behemoths. Now what that tells you is that uh, there's a lot of different ways to play T3. So once you once you transition to T3, there's a lot of different um, options in terms of uh, how to uh, how to utilize it. So you can, uh, for example, you could just build like ten constructors right off the start, just basically go super eco. So once you get to T3, upgrade your economy out the wazoo. So you're not even using T3 uh, initially for the combat. You're just using it to give yourself like a huge economic advantage. So that's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it is to uh, spam out some of the cheaper T3 units. Um, like blaze, you could, you could just build a bunch of blazes um, and kind of go for like a run by because it's the blaze is kind of a uh, harassment, you know, run by raiding vehicle. So you could build a bunch of those. Those are obviously a lot cheaper than the behemoth. Um, but what Harold has done this game is really interesting. He's gone straight for the upgrade center and then straight into behemoths. So what what that tells me is that uh, Harold is trying to in the game. He's not. You know, he's not super focusing on his eco right away. Though he does have a couple of uh, ultra construction vehicles, but he's not even using this one right now. I mean, it seems like he's just trying to get a huge T3 advantage and leverage that to uh, sort of win the game. Um, going straight for the upgrade center and then pumping out Behemoths is a very... Uh, it's a very brute force kind of strat. It's very, it's very obvious what you're doing. And um, if he gets enough of these behemoths, I mean, if he gets a critical mass of them, uh, in addition to the army he already has, he certainly could win the game. Uh, race does doesn't well. He's he's got some pretty good defense. He's got some doomsday machines. So he's just built his defense way back here. It's kind of surprising that Race built his defense all back here instead of um, further up. Nice tactical nuke there. But uh, no, Race just deciding to build the defense at the choke point. It's not a bad idea. But yeah, he's built it really far back. And... Uh, with enough behemoths though, I mean... Harold could win the game. Even with all these defenses. I mean, behemoths are just designed to, to, to have so much health that uh, they, can, they can break through. So where was that tactical nuke? We saw, we saw one. I'm slowing down, I want to find this tactical nuke. The players are so good at hiding them that uh, even even I, the caster, struggle to find the Here it is. Neutralizer. But uh, nice, some nice diplomat pressure taking out that Doomsday Machine. Very well played. Uh, are there enough behemoths to break through here? I'm inclined to think that, that like, three is not enough. I, he needs more. I think he needs more. I mean, three behemoths is strong, but, like, God, I, I wish he would have waited till he had, like, ten. Yeah, Harold may have revealed his hand a little too early here. He will take out the Doomsday Machine. Both of them. I think I think there was two. But uh, I, I I feel like he, he needed to wait until he had a critical mass of Behemoths. Instead of three, maybe like ten.
He has sort of tipped his hand, and now Race knows what is coming. Let's see, is either player going air? It's surprising this game, neither player has really uh, done much in the uh, aerial raid department, which is surprising. Both these players certainly very good, certainly able to use air. Another tactical nuke coming in. It's going to hit right in the middle. Uh, it did miss most of the army there. And these behemoths have a ton of HP, so it's not going to do too much. And again, nice use of diplomats by both players. This time I think Harold trying to take this out. And uh, the Viper does have a lot of HP when it's closed. But even so, the uh, the diplomats will eventually get through it. And, uh, yeah, if you can get, like I said, if you can get about 10 of these behemoths and just move right through there. Not technically right there, like, either way. Race going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, race building some uh, Karganeths. I think that's what they're called. Talos. Excuse me. So race building some Talos. And uh, even still, the, the battle for the mid is very even. Neither player has uh, successfully broken through. Harold uh, now going for a mammoth. What are those? What is the official? I think it's like... Yeah, ultra heavy laser assault tank. So I think that kind of speaks for itself. Now the, uh, the Talos on the field. Guys, it looks like Race's economy is much better here. It looks like Race is at about 400 metal per second to Herald's 267. So Race with, uh, seems like a huge economic lead here. And I think that is just because when Race tech to T3, he spent a lot more time uh, building builders constructors and then he w he went straight away and upgraded his uh his eco where as i said before harold went for a a kind of more of a, a game ending strategy it's not that he isn't upgrading his eco but he's doing it more slowly than than uh than race race is definitely beat him to the punch race uh definitely went more greedy here with his T3 build, with his, uh, yeah, his, his T3 options, and he is just upgrading like a madman, and a race now on T3 aircraft as well, or, or working on T3 aircraft. So we are at a game time of 53 minutes, and as of yet, it is it continues to be a stalemate but Race certainly feels like he has the lead in terms of eco, and he is uh, about 75 uh, metal ahead and about 5,000 energy. So not massive, but definitely significant. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the game is over by any means. But uh, race certainly pulling ahead, and um, 
I'd like to see this ultra aircraft hangar complete. Neither player has really utilized air that much this game. Uh, except as just for constructors and uh, some fighters. That's about it. There hasn't been any bombing at all. But uh, neither player at this moment has what it's going to take to break through the mid either. So that, that continues to be a problem plaguing both, both teams. They just can't... Uh, they just can't break through. Now I'd like to see Race build some Arbitrators. Those are really great in stalemate situations. Of course the Arbitrator is the uh, T3... Nuke K-Bot. Where is it at? Um, yeah, right here. Mobile Heavy Missile Launcher. Basically fires nukes like every 10, 20 seconds. They can't be countered. Uh, I'd love to see some Arbitrators here. It would be really nice. But uh, Race deciding to go for another uh, another push. But uh, yeah, it's ill-advised. Uh, race doesn't have what it's going to take yet. Need some arbitrators. Be great in this situation. Here we go. Another tactical nuke. Ooh, that was a good one. He took out a ton. Of course, the mammoths are just tickled. But either way, a nice tactical nuke. More scouts from race. Hell's gonna die. But yeah, Race has got to be careful, man. You do, he doesn't want to keep throwing his army away like this. Mammoth, very great. Uh, a, a strong defensive unit, because it's, it's just... It's got uh, raid boss levels of health. And, uh... It's hard, just hard to kill... Puts out a lot of direct damage. It's just hard to push into mammoths. Um, I think race needs to find another way to win than just trying to push on land. Maybe when he gets this uh, ultra aircraft hangar on the field. Could that be the advantage he needs to turn the tides? Uh, and Harold amassing quite a nice army of uh, T3 vehicles. But will it be enough to break through? There's, a, there's still a lot of defense here. Of course, the Diplomat's doing a good job of, uh, of softening up all of this. Yeah, nice, nice job by these diplomats. Very good use of it. Taking out the defenses and Harold thinking about going for a push. Oh no, Harold! Make your <laughs> retreat, retreat. Um, yeah, I don't. I really don't agree with this by race. I don't. I don't agree with this attack. He's. He really doesn't need to. Uh, he doesn't want to lose his army and then get counterattacked by Harold. But these Talos are pretty fast. And Harold may just ignore them. 
Harold has kind of seen that uh, race race has just sent the the core of his army north, and so Harold's not even going to bother to stop them. He sees an opportunity to push through, and uh, I have to say this army by Harold looks nigh unstoppable. Remember earlier when I was saying about those 10 behemoths? Well, now we've got 10 behemoths and 3 mammoths. Now this army looks freaking unstoppable. And uh, I missed it, but it looked like Harold degunned those Talos. Guys, I'm sorry for missing that. But either way, those Talos have died. And Race has now opened himself up to the counterattack of the sentry. He needed to keep those Talos... For defense. I don't think Race was behind. He probably could have defended this. But now without those Talos, this attack looks unstoppable to me. Oh my goodness. Juggernaut, uh, you know, it's a good start. But is it is it enough? I don't, I don't know. I don't think this one juggernaut is going to be enough. It's getting low. Yeah, this juggernaut getting low. Man, those Talos, he really needed those to defend. Sending them, sending them away like that. It just... It revealed to Harold that, uh... <laughs> that he was weak. He opened up a an opportunity. I, I don't think Harold would have attacked if Race had not sent his army of Talos up the, uh, up the east side like that. Harold really being opportunistic there, seeing an opening um, after Harold just kind of threw away his, his Talos and gave... Uh, gave... So once once race threw away his Talos, it gave Harold an opening to uh, counterattack and win. Very good game uh, by both players, and, and I feel like it could have gone on even longer. But uh, nice job by uh, Harold to recognize that that moment and to uh, attack and win the game. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks again for a thousand subs, and I will see you on the next cast.